In this class we want to talk about the meaning of motivation and some ideas associated with this concept of motivation. Also its importance within uh, business itself. So let's start by posing the question what is motivation? Well Buchanan, a uh, famous writer in the area, explains motivation. He says motivation is a decision-making process through which the individual chooses the desired outcomes and sets in motion the behavior appropriate to them. The individual chooses the desired outcomes so the individual works out the desired outcomes and sets in motion the behavior to uh, to get them, to, to achieve those. And the people therefore are motivated to get the desired outcome. That's presumably what lies behind it. Martin defines motivation within an organization. Uh, reflect on any team support. The player spends considerable time and effort on the field attempting to exhort the other players to perform more effectively. Now, so we see motivation in teamwork, we see it in sports, we see it in business. It is trying to get the players, the workers, to exert more effort and to engage the work more fully. Managers are constantly seeking different options in order to motivate their employees to improve performance at every level of the business. In doing so, they will benefit from increased amount of productivity and reduced cost. So, motivation is clearly important. It's what drives the workers. And if the workers work harder and apply themselves more effectively, there will be greater productivity. Greater productivity, greater output, lower costs, more sales, more revenue more profits, greater security in employment, growth in the company, more chances of advancement. So it's a very positive picture and it all starts with this idea of motivation. Motivation is the, the driving force that encourages individuals to achieve their desired goals and targets. It is entirely dependent on the individual whether the motivation comes from an internal or external source. Now we'll talk about this later in, in the next few slides, but motivation can come from inside. It, it can be an internal thing to the individual. The individual is self-motivated. They like to achieve. They like to, to work hard and apply themselves. Or it could be external. It could be some sort of external influence that's encouraging them to work harder and to engage in uh, engage with the tasks that are set. The need for motivation is an ongoing process. If one goal has been achieved the need arises to achieve another goal. So it's very seldom that it's a single goal to be achieved. Normally when the workers have achieved one goal the focus moves on to look at the next one to try and improve that. So it's a constant uh, stream of activities aimed at improving the workflow, impro improving productivity and this is done through trying to improve the motivation of the workers. Now the importance of uh, motivation. Well, individual capabilities are put into action individuals are capable. Human beings are very capable. We are creative and we are competent at many tasks. And harnessing all of that competency and all of that skill and ability is, is a big task. But if it's achieved then productivity would be very very high. So trying to get the workers to engage in the work, to identify with the business and to 
produce more willingly produce more that is the importance of motivation employees are more efficient when they're more efficient there's increased productivity and as I said earlier the organization costs are reduced the organization overall is efficient and that's to the benefit of everyone not just the owners but the employees as well job security perhaps higher wages perhaps uh, expansion of the business so the local community even will benefit through what we call multiplier effects three it allows an organization to reach full potential resources are successfully implied within the organization if the workers are motivated generally speaking when workers are motivated the organization will be a friendly place and more conducive to work there will be a better spirit within the, the workforce if they're motivated if they're not motivated it can be a very dismal environment a very depressing environment finally employees are fully aware of their goals and act in accordance to achieve these goals well if the employees know what their their goals are then they can work towards them if there's ambiguity about that then the workers may not be motivated they don't know what they're trying to achieve they don't know what the task is they don't know what the long run goal is so it's important to have motivation within the organization for for these reasons it's also important to encourage a more relaxed and approachable environment you could have career motivation um, based on the idea of career pro progression workers like to be able to get promotion to be recognized and it helps them with their their obligations at home outside of the workplace obligations to buy a house perhaps or to look after a family or to run a car which may be necessary to get to work so motivation uh, means that the workers have the opportunity to perhaps seek promotion there may be financial motivation as well perhaps if if the workers are working hard and more engaged there will be bonuses or some additional payments there's also stability of the workforce another important reason why motivation is important uh, an organization should enjoy a good reputation and goodwill the goodwill of the workforce and that of course is a function of the communication systems within the business and how the line managers and the higher managers are seen in terms of approachability so if the workforce feel that they're being valued and respected for their contribution they will be more engaged and the stability of the workforce also of course reflects the, the skills and efficiency of the employees uh, that can work two ways if the skills and efficiency of the employees are not generally recognized and not rewarded then skilled the skilled parts of the workforce may have an incentive to move job to to leave the company and seek employment elsewhere where perhaps they're more highly valued so that's an issue now the importance of motivation to an individual well the individual aims to achieve personal goals the truth is we we work because 
it enables us to live. It enables us to have a salary and to meet our personal obligations. It also, however, gives us job satisfaction. <coughs> a good job will give us job satisfaction, so we can relate to the job. We like, we like going to work. It's not a bad experience. And the fact that we have disposable income and we like to work gives us self-esteem. And perhaps if we do a good job we would be promoted. So there's a development need. We like to be promoted within work and recognised. And there's also perhaps an opportunity to work in a team. And the team might be dynamic and full of good ideas and it's it's all experimental and modern and interesting. So it's not just mundane work, it's it's engaging work. So for the individual that may be a set of issues. For the business, well, motivation will result in more employee contribution, hence more profits and success of the organization. So motivation is certainly something that the business would want to, to look at. The next point is it generates creativity and adaptability. Well if if there's high, a high level of motivation within the workforce they will come up with good ideas. And perhaps some of them will come up with not such good ideas but every idea should be respected. Presumably it was well intentioned. It was meant to help and should be valued as such. But of the ideas coming through tr uh, some of them will truly be exceptional and worth implementing. And because the workers are involved with the tasks on a day-to-day -day basis they know the tasks in intimately they have a better opportunity to make recommendations because they can see the job more clearly. They're not just people who come along and briefly look at the job and move on. So there is an opportunity if the workforce are motivated to have greater creativity and adaptability. So it provides a more challenging and progressive environment. The whole business benefits from a motivated workforce. Uh, it could almost be seen as a part of the research and development activity. It's not centralised, it's not departmentalised, it's widespread throughout the organisation, but if the workforce are highly motivated, the chances are they're going to come up with ideas which are cost saving. And that's a good thing. Now, as for motivation theories themselves, well, there are many of these, and most of them seem to hinge around two elements associated with motivation, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And before I look at intrinsic for a second, I'll say that there are many theories of motivation and the classes that were being put up here uh, will start to engage in more and more of these theories and it will give a wider perspective of the views of motivation from, from some very famous writers. But for the moment, just to introduce these, this basic um, concept of motivation. Um, intrinsic motivation, well it looks into how motivation is encouraged through an interest or enjoyment within, the, within an activity. It is said that this type of motivation originates from within the individual rather than external factors. So. <clears throat> we must try and see the workforce as having intrinsic motivation. It's what drives them. And that is a part that needs to be cultivated. That's the part, a part that needs to be drawn out. So that the, the workforce are getting satisfaction, internal satisfaction if you like, to engage with the work. The second type is extrinsic and extrinsic occurs from external sources, it comes from outside the individual and impacts on their behaviour and attitude to work. 
Examples of extrinsic motivation could include rewards, bonuses, money, higher grades of working, acknowledgement. Uh, in many of the service sectors, um, for example in food retailing, in many stores they have employee of the month. It's, it's an extrinsic motivator and presumably the person who's picked as employee of the month will be very proud of the fact that they have been picked as that. They have been recognized as some, as some worker who's done something exceptional or has worked extremely hard on, on some aspect of the task. So we have two types of motivation. Intrinsic, inside, inside the person, is what drives the person, which needs to be cultivated, it needs to be, it needs to be brought out, it needs to be nourished. And we have extrinsic, which are the factors that pull the employees along, the rewards, the money, the grades, the acknowledgement. So we've looked at two, two types of motivation, intrinsic and extrinsic. And these are related to the work activity and there's a level of reward which each receives. The intrinsic one may not uh, be rewarded in, in money, it may be rewarded in the, the satisfaction that the worker gets from doing a good job. It's the satisfaction that the worker gets from, from knowing that he or she has made a valuable contribution. And the feedback for future, for the future, well that may depend on the reward satisfaction. So it may, the feedback for future uh, may, may depend on the extent to which each worker feels that they were rewarded, were recognized and were valued. That's the intrinsic. It will also depend on the effectiveness of bonuses and promotions and so on as an incentive for the workforce to be more motivated. So that's all we want to do in this class. Um, we've gone across some basic ideas about motivation and that is sufficient. So we'll, we'll leave this class here at that and thank you for watching.